Welcome back to OK Games. So, a game genre that is really popular right now are the auto battle, like auto chess or teamfight tactics. I wanted to make one, why not? And so I'm making this tutorial series so you can follow along. At the end of the video you will have something like this. Not that fancy, but at least it's something. I will speed up the code part while trying to explain in what I'm doing, or you will just fall asleep on the keyboard. With that being said, let's start. First thing first, we'll need a map. So I've downloaded some tiles from the Unity Asset Store and using the tile palette I've laid out something basic. With the tile palette you can simply select your type of tile and start drawing on the scene, that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna make a graph that will represent the map. A graph is a pretty common structure composed by a set of nodes and a set of edges. Starting with a node, it will hold the position it represents and whether it is occupied by a unit or not. An edge, instead, represents a connection between two nodes, and so it will need a reference to those two nodes and how much does it cost to follow that edge. In our case, the cost will be infinity if the destination is occupied, and that means you can take that path. Moving to the graph itself, it will have a collection of nodes and a collection of edges, along with a bunch of metal for retrieving neighbors or to evaluate the distance between two nodes. Now that we have our graph class, we need to populate it. So, returning to Unity, let's create a grid manager that will handle all the setup and it will work as a middleman for our graph. We'll need a reference to the tile map for populating the graph automatically. And so, by cycling through all the tiles in the tile map, create a new node every time we find an existing tile with the tile word position. Having created all the nodes, we need to add the edges. A simple way of doing so is to cycle every node and add an edge towards every other node that is close to him. To visualize the graph in Unity, let's use the bug.draw line for the edges and gizmo.draw sphere for the nodes. Now, returning back to Unity, if we add a reference to the tile map and hit play, by going to the scene view we can see our graph being drawn. That seems ok. Now we need to add some units to the game. Let's start with a generic game manager that, for the moment, will handle the creation of our unit. It will need some kind of reference to a unit class that we don't have, so let's return to Unity and create a new script called Base Entity. This script will represent the base of every unit in the game, so it will hold every stat needed. Returning to the game manager, we can continue with instantiating some units for each team. Now we need some way of initializing the unit, let's add it. When creating a new unit we will also need to know in which node to put it. So in our grid manager create a function for retrieving the first free node for a given team. If it's for the team 1, we will start from the bottom left of the map, otherwise we will start from the top right. If the first selected node is occupied, we will continue and try the next one until eventually we run out of node or we find one that is free. I then made a manager class to act as a singleton base class. With that, I can set up the new unit with a free node given by the grid manager. Let's return to Unity and test this. First, we'll need a unit. So, with a nice knight sprite, let's make a prefab with the base entity script and remember to assign the sprite renderer. Let's assign to the game manager the newly created prefab, but before trying it, we need some other settings. First, we'll need to set the pivot of the sprite to the bottom center of the image. You can do so by selecting the sprite, clicking on the sprite editor and then move the little blue circle to the bottom of the image and hit apply. Next, we have to set the sorting layer of the sprite renderer to a greater value, I'll set this to 5. Now, if we hit play, we can see our two units. Awesome! Now we can add some movement because they are just standing still. 
In our graph class, we can add a function that calculates the path between two nodes. It will hold an open list of nodes to search through and a collection of distance from a given node. Let's start by cycling while we still have a node in the open list. Get the closest one and see if it matches with our end node. If so, we are done, and we can build the path by going backward from the current node. Otherwise, we should check every neighbor of the current node and see if the current distance plus the distance from the neighbor is less than what we had before, and in that case, update the values. Having this getPath function, we can try and visualize it in Unity. So, returning to the Grid Manager class, we can add some useful lines of code to test the pathfinding. We can expose two variables to play with through the editor and use the back.draw line with a red color to mark the path. If we now head back to Unity, we can test this with some random node index, and we can see that there are some lines in red that represent the path between those two nodes. That seems to work. So, finally, let's add movement to our units. A unit will need a way to find his target. To do so, let's add a utility function in the game manager that gives back all the enemies of a team. Now that we have a list of enemies, let's find the closest one and set it as our target. Great! Now let's make our unit get in range for attack. So, if we have a target and we are not already moving, we need to find a node where we can go to get closer. If we cycle through all the neighbors of the node where our target is standing on, we can take the first free node and use it as our target destination. Having now this destination, use the getPath function to retrieve the path we need to follow. If a valid path is returned, let's set our current destination to the first node of the path. For the movement part, simply calculate the direction towards our current destination, and if we reach it, we can stop. Ok, we got some function laid out, now what? Well, we can start and make our first type of unit, which will be a melee unit. A melee unit will simply find a new target if he hasn't got one, check if he's in range for attack and otherwise try and get close to his victim. Let's skip the attack logic for now and put a simple log. Now we can head back to Unity, update the night prefab with a new script and hit play. Finally our units are doing something, they are trying to get closer to an enemy and when they reach it, they just print the attack log. Let's now make our unit able to attack and receive damage. So in our entity base class, we can add an attack function that will check if we can attack and then start a timer based on our attack speed to refresh our can attack flag. Then we can add a take damage function that will update the current health of the unit and check if it's dead. Let's finalize now the melee unit logic by making him attack his target when it's in range. When a unit dies, we need to inform the game manager, so let's add a function to handle this case that will remove the dead unit. Ok, they are attacking each other, but we can't see that match, so let's add a health bar. I've created two awesome images for the health bar. Let's drag them into the scene and adjust them. The green bar will represent how much life a unit has and I want it to scale it towards zero when the unit life is decreasing. To do it, we need to set the pivot of the green bar to the left edge of the image, so it will scale toward that direction. Now let's resize it to a more realistic side and add a new script to it named, well, health bar. This script will resize the green bar based on the current life of the unit and will have the same position as it plus an offset for, for moving it above the unit's head. This script will resize the green bar based on the current life of the unit and will have the same position as it, plus an offset for moving it above the unit's head. Now, a unit will need a reference to the health bar prefab. It will instantiate one for himself during the setup function, 
and it will need to keep it updated every time he takes damage. We can now return to Unity, add the reference to the health bar prefab and hit play. Let's enjoy for a moment our knights moving and killing each other. This was a concentrated and fast tutorial on how to start an auto battle game. If you made it till the end, congratulations, you can now go and start your own project. I will continue mine and post new tutorial based on it, like this one, maybe they will be shorter and easier though. If you didn't catch a step or you want to know more, leave a comment down below and I will happily answer you. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video useful, leave a like, it would mean a lot to me. Subscribe so you can follow this journey, otherwise you could miss some pretty good stuff. That's all, see you next time.